，攞咗你啲裝備啦。當然誒，綁好個鞋帶。For your feet. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Good. Is everybody feeling yes. very well? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some sort of shell, something that uh, that that will do. Okay. That one is fine. Okay. Yeah. Because it does get windier up there, and so I want uh, I want you to have an extra layer to be able to put on in case that's the case. We can do it here in the valley, and that will hopefully allow us to have a lot more fun once we step onto the ice. Yeah. Now, because. Uh, all of you guys showed up a little bit late. Uh, we know why it happened. Uh, it's the traffic. Can't really affect that. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, we will make less stops here in the valley so we can hopefully catch up with the other groups because we really paid for the on ice time and uh, uh -huh. we have to make it to the top of the hill. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The good news is once we're there, that is the most difficult part of the trip behind us. Yeah? Yeah. So our next stop is going to be on top of the hill. We're just going to set off. You get there when you get there. Yeah. Yes. Take it at your own pace. I don't want anyone to collapse as you as you reach the top of the hill. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Good. Excellent. Follow me. Hello. Ice storm or rain. We'll talk more about that on the ice. All right, guys. Okay. <laughs> Follow me. Yeah. How do we feel so far? Oh, okay. yes. Really nice. Good. We have an old saying yeah. when it comes to glacier travel and it goes. In crampons we trust. Yes. Repeat after me. In crampons we trust. Good. Don't say it. Believe it. Because if you trust your spikes, they'll get you up. They'll get you down. So, where do you guys think the glacier is? At the front. Yeah. You can see it shining through in places yeah. here oh. at the bottom. Yeah. So you got ice walk. To the sunlight. You know certain types of rays, but the sun emits are very heavy these. And so they would disrupt the crystallic structure of the ice and separate the crystals from one another. And uh, that's what turns the ice into this very soft matter. It's actually a lot softer than the ice that we would find further down. And I'm going to show you what I mean. Just mind your eyes. Soft these. And if you see that if I break it, then it actually falls apart into fairly regularly sized crystals. Crystal. Yeah. yeah? So it's almost like a 3D puzzle. Oh. <laughs> because the crystals were already yeah. dislodged, they were separated, yes. or their, uh, their connections were weakened by the sun. And so it's a lot easier to take them apart. And if you haven't tried, yes. come please. <laughs> <laughs> It makes for excellent rocks for the whiskey. <laughs> and oh God. You, may, you may notice that it pops on your tongue. Crystal, I air pockets. If you take the crystal out of yeah. your mouth and you look at it against the sun, you can actually see little bubbles. Right here. But sun, sun, sun. Great. <laughs> 
And you can take a you can take a guess how old this ice is. How old would you say it is? Also, this is all the Yes. How this pool used to be before it broke off. And uh, my question is, what purpose do you think this pool serves? For the top. Pardon me? On it? Now that would be because it was under angle, it would be another meter of the ground, so about four meters of the ground now. And that's taped uh, up five to six feet. That's how much ice we lose annually. Yeah. Sure, sure. In one year. Oh, did they? Oh, yeah. No. In fact, uh, the worst thing uh, that you could have done for the glaciers of the world, we could have done for the glaciers of the world, we have done already by taking a flight to get here. Okay? So a lot of people ask uh, about the buses, you know, is that climate has been always changing? Of course, if some people are thinking this way, then uh, we are where we are. It is true that the climate has been changing in the past, but it is how it is changing and how fast it is changing. And it's a fact climate catastrophe, because there are a lot more reflected what is actually going on. And when I read it, the first thought I had was, well, finally, at the very least, we may stop collectively polishing the turret. It does, it can make a difference. Maybe collectively, we can build up enough sense of urgency if we stop talking about climate change and start talking about climate catastrophe. Mm -hmm. Now that puts a very different ring to the conversation, yeah? Maybe over time the people that actually can affect things on grander scale may start acting faster and that's what it had to deal with in the past. And has always managed to restore the balance. And I'm sure we'll do it again. But I'm not sure whether we'll be around when it hits the reset button. <laughs> That's the scary thought. The water uh, in the world becomes uh, maybe something else. We'll just keep building the wall. <laughs> the barriers. <laughs> so, yes, if you guys, uh, it's time to start looking at the properties in the hills. Because <laughs> yeah. I had a physical geographer on my last shift here. And the guy spent 40 years repairing. It's beyond salary. Ice, uh, not Iceland, uh, Antarctica, still questionable, still can go both ways. So that really, that really hit me hard. Like, this sort of wake up moment. Yeah. It's, uh, and I think it's very powerful, but it's very important. Yeah? I mean, I know it's, it's not uh, nice stuff that we're talking Idea to onset, maybe take your hat off. It's very unusual that a snow wind where the glacier used to be, how it's been changing the landscape, why is it melting, how much ice we've lost, the fact that it is doomed. But there's one thing that we haven't covered, and that is what is it? It looks like a half bowl, like a half circle, uh, and that was carved by the ice. So as the snow there was accumulating, there was the catchment area just at mountainside. Eventually, so the Surrey Glacier. So we can actually see four different types of glacier from this very point. Yes. Yeah. And there are many more, uh, but I cannot showcase those two because we don't see them. <laughs>
no clients, it's a initiation. It's a rite of passage. Yeah. And we call it the Viking push-ups. Oh. You know, back in the day, the Vikings, they did not have plastic bottles. And when the Viking got thirsty, there was always one thing to rely on. Their weapon. A massive double-edged battle axe. So when the Viking found a stream and they were thirsty, all he or she would have to do is take their weapon, place it across, Assume the position and quench their thirst. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Uh, 30 <laughs> guys. Hey. Hey. Oh. Oh. There's no toilet around here, you gotta keep that in mind. Yeah. Massive beards, yeah. yeah. So they Especially could actually yeah. transport some amount of liquid. I only have a tiny stage, but I think you'll get me through the rest of the tour. If you would like to try, you can use my weapon. Alternatively, the Icelandic sagas also tell us of a thing called the uh, shield maiden. So is anybody feeling thirsty? He's got a little boy inside.